Hi, I'm Louise Hardman from the Plastic Collective. Today we're looking at different types of plastic. We have basically seven different types of plastics um, in our packaging and food container industry. Number one, PET, is our first one. The most common and the most highly valued. Made into soda water bottles or any any bottle that basically contains carbonated water because it's a high density, strong type of plastic. And what does that get recycled into? Um, that can go back into either bottles again, so it can be called RPET, recycled PET, or other containers. It's the same material as polyester, so that can be converted into polyester fiber. Um, ideally, if they're turning it into clothes, you have to make sure you're not making clothes that are going to produce microfibers that are just going to flake off and go into the ocean anyway. Um, so often with PET, they'll make a thread, and that's polyester. Same material, just a different name. Um, that's polyester. That can be put into carpets, all sorts of things. This one's got two different types of plastic. It's got a hard um, PET, number one, and it's got a soft plastic, which is the number two or number four. So polyethylene on the outside, PET on the outside. So it makes it a little bit harder to recycle. Okay, this is an example of excessive packaging. All this soft plastic, polyethylene on the outside will get discarded and thrown away, never, probably never recycled again. The polyethylene lids, um, PET bottles. These can be recycled um, quite easily, but in essence, you really just need to reduce. You just bring your own. Number two is HDPE, high density polyethylene. As you can see here, HDPE is the second most common plastic type. Soap containers, the detergents, the washing up things, milk bottles, yogurt containers. It's a creamy color, but they can often put another color in with it. Very easy to recycle. Bottle caps, HDPE and LDPE. HDPE, as you can see, it's got a big two on it, which is really nice. High density polyethylene, it never really goes clear. It's sort of a milky color. That's why you've seen it in all the detergent bottles. It's chemically resistant. Um, second highest one after PET. In all the cafes, they produce a lot of milk bottles and um, it can be recycled, it can be re transformed. The, the lids were made out of low density polyethylene, so they're a lighter weight type of polyethylene. Number three, PVC. Not so good, a very toxic one when you burn it. Um, you don't really want to burn anything, but if you burn PVC, PVC, which they do over in a lot of different countries with no waste collection, hydrochloric gas, which is um, totally toxic. Mostly it's used in the construction hardware industry, plumbing and things like that. They put hardeners in with it for piping. PVC is UV resistant, so it is good for sort of outdoor piping. Um, they're starting to replace that with other things like polypropylene, which is a very versatile type of plastic and doesn't have the chlorine in it. PVC used to be used a lot more in the food industry. In Asian countries it's used a lot more because it's a cheap plastic that can be put into um, food containers and it's often it's a very light clear type of plastic it will have number three on it often they won't say anything more than number three I've seen it in sandwich containers where you have those sandwiches sliced in half into the triangle I've seen them in that and other food trays number four low density polyethylene linked to number two this is the polyethylene so usually low density number four um, all the soft plastics are mostly polyethylene and they're the hardest to recycle. That's why we have to reduce our soft plastics more than anything. Number five, polypropylene. A lot of, a lot of containers like Homets and Pesto are made out of number five, polypropylene, a very versatile, lightweight type of plastic that's used in all different shapes and sizes. It's a great plastic um, and it's quite safe. Easily turned into new products. Number six, polystyrene. Um, toxic at 70 degrees, release of styrene is often used in coffee cup lids. So if you see number six on your coffee cup lid, you should be using your keep cup. But if you see number six and you're drinking hot coffee out of it, that's polystyrene, not good for your health. Linked to carcinogenic sort of stuff. All right, this one normally is number five. The lid is number five, polypropylene. However, I've just looked at the bottom and we found a number six written there. 
which means it's polystyrene. Polystyrene is not the healthiest type of plastic, so one to be avoided, one to be banned, really. All right, so take a look at this. This is what I call ridiculous. Hope nobody's <laughs> Okay, excessive packaging of soft polyethylene all over it, heaps of it wrapping polystyrene, black polystyrene. The styrene that should be banned in Australia, should be banned everywhere, it's not healthy for us. Um, mushrooms, good healthy mushrooms wrapped up in all this bad plastic. When you can put it in, you know, your paper bag, so that's just ridiculous. So these black, black trays are um, yeah, polystyrene. Which kind of plastic is the common, um, like, Asian takeaway boxes? That's often polystyrene. Yeah, so if you have a plastic, it's very lightweight. It could either be black or clear, and you scrunch it, and it's got this real crackly sound. That's usually polystyrene. Okay. Um, PET, which is a replacement for polystyrene, doesn't have the crackly sound to it. It's sort of more of a robust, thicker type of plastic. That one is the most highly sought after for um, in the recycling industry. People get paid the highest amount, so that's the first thing that gets collected. That's why we're doing the container deposit scheme, because that one, um, we do have industries in Australia and other countries that can recycle that quite, quite well. Number seven is the new one that's being used more and more, uh, more a bio, bio plastic, PLA. Number sevens basically mean others, but quite commonly in the food industry it's PLA, polylactic acid, made from corn starch or vegetable matter, um, which is sort of off, off cuts. That one's quite a good one. It's a very, um, it's, it's used in 3D printing. It's the most common one in 3D printing filament, and it's a very versatile, strong, high density. It's not overly flexible, which makes it good for 3D printing, but they're using it now as a replacement to PET in cups and things like that. So that one's quite a good one. It should be used a bit more in replacement to the other ones that are not so healthy and good for you. How long does that one take to biodegrade? Um, depending. Depending if you if you're going to put it into a commercial composting thing, it'll take. You need, it needs to be at 60 degrees for at least four hours, I believe. But if you can't put that in a green bin, so if you get one of those green bags um, and you and it says biodegradable, it might have oxy biodegradable. So that's not so good. They have they add some heavy metals to that. So. Avoid sort of your biodegradables unless you know it's definitely going to a commercial composting place that can take it. Often they'll say um, home compostable if it's got a certified leaf, um, ISO sort of a leaf symbol on it. Yet yeah, that is good in your own home composting system. If you put it into a yellow bin and expect it to go through the recycling process, it won't. If you put it in a green bin, often it will get rejected because they have laser beams that pick it up as a plastic bag, not as a compostable plastic bag. A whole lot can get rejected. So there's a bit of a tricky sort of thing around that until we get the technology in these recycling industries to be able to identify compostable bags. Um, Generally, just put them in your own composting thing, but make sure it is home compostable certified. Um, a lot of brands are saying they're bio this, they're eco this, when in effect they're not. So PLA is a good plastic if it gets recycled, but it mostly doesn't end up in the recycle in the right place. Yeah, PLA is good, but it's it depends on the recycling company or the council that's doing it. So each one will vary, so there's no real general rule saying this is what happens at every single place because they'll all be different. Um, as we get better and our recycling and our you know, recovery rates get better, the PLA may start to replace other sort of more petroleum type products because the, the public's wanting that. They want bioplastics or they want things that are more sustainable for the earth. Does RPET have a different number? No. Does it have a label at all? Yeah, RPET will say RPET and it will say 100% 100, 100 recycled. There's a difference between 100% recyclable and 100% recycled. Have a look, they'll say this bottle was made from RPET.
Right. This one's a particular problem. This is made out of a thicker type of polyethylene. Um, the lids are great for recycling, so if you do happen to use these, clean them out, cut the top off, and save them. If it contains food, it's harder to clean, so it's not going to get recycled, right? Yeah, that's right. These are the these will be the first ones that go to landfill. Only because, really, it's just quite a hard plastic to recycle unless you have specialised equipment. And most, it's, it hasn't got a high value in the recycling industry compared to PET or HCPE. Okay. Does it have a number on the bottom? Yeah. No number. Uh, it should do. But see, it's also got metal mixed in with it, so it's sort of like layers of aluminium as well. So to reheat this is a bit of a pain. Yeah, so these, I think these are one of the most annoying. Basically, my, my rule is number three and number six are the ones you want to avoid. Avoid as much soft plastic as you can, all the, the wraps, you know, get your beeswax wraps, all the other types of things. The soft plastics do have phthalates in it, which is a softener. A softener, um, yeah, they can leach into food and things like that, so try and avoid them as much as possible. And also they're the ones that harm the environment more than anything because they're such lightweight and they move very fast through the system, through the gutters, into the water, into animals and eventually into us. So one and two and four and five, they are quite good in, like they're quite clean, safe plastics. I suppose there's not too, too many additives in them. Um, the less colors, the better. And those ones can be recycled quite easily. We've developed a machine called the Schroeder. It's a, two machines in one. It's a mobile plastic recycling machine for communities with no waste management. Um, so it, it is a shredding machine combined with an extrusion machine. So the, basically the plastic will go in one side, get shredded into flakes. The flakes will go into the other side and can come out as extrusion filament or cord. So we're working on developing different types of 3D printing filament. We've still got some testing to go on that. Um, at the moment we do filament that can be made into bags, mats, all different things. We're also working with a number of different companies. By doing a closed loop sort of economy model, we work with collectors and other creators so we can produce materials like um, hand plane surfboards, houses and furniture and you know, biofilters, there's a stack of different things that the shredded material is used for and it is bought by different companies. Currently, in a lot of places, they buy the material from China and then they make their product. They'll have a specific mould, they'll make their product. So what we're doing is bringing these machines in, providing an economic incentive, micro-business, for these small communities and they can provide the shredded material to companies close by. Where can people find out more? Um, www.plasticcollective.co Facebook page called Plastic Collective Our Instagram, Plastic Collective